Hello, Grade 9, and welcome to your new reading comprehension lesson. Our theme is still human behavior and self-confidence, but our new lesson is called Do You Have the Right Mindset? As you see in the figures in front of you, you have two people, one with a fixed mindset and the other with a growth mindset. Let's see what that means. <clears throat> By the end of this lesson, you'll be able to discuss ideas related to the growth mindset versus fixed mindset. And as we had discussed in the previous lesson, comprehension lesson, the word mindset is how you think towards issues, how uh, what your attitude is towards things that you face in your life, mindset. Figure out the meanings of unfamiliar. Okay, your mindset, your way of thinking could be fixed or growth. What does it mean to have a fixed mindset? It means you have a negative attitude or way of thinking towards life and issues that you face. Do you dislike challenges? You don't like them at all and are afraid of them. You're afraid of leaving your comfort zone and trying new things. And finally, as a result, you do not experience personal growth and this leads to lack of self-confidence. On the other hand, if you have a growth mindset, you have a positive attitude towards life and the challenges that you face. Challenges are difficulties, the hardships. You welcome challenges and view them as a way to grow. Finally, as a result, your personality grows and you become a more resilient person. The word resilient means strong. Now let's go to our lesson. Do you have the right mindset? As you see in front of you, this is your brain. If you have a growth mindset, you have a colorful brain. Okay, you're not afraid of trying new things. You're not afraid of challenges. You challenge yourself or a fixed mindset where you do not want to leave your comfort zone and you do not want to try anything new or challenging. Do you have the right mindset? Read the following article about the difference between a growth mindset and a fixed mindset and then answer the questions that follow. Paragraph one, think back to when you were in a classroom maybe a math classroom, and the teacher set a difficult problem. That could have been any time between this morning or a few years ago. Which of the two following responses is closer to the way you reacted? The author is asking you a question here. Would you react this way if the math teacher gave you a difficult problem, or would you act this way? A, you would say, oh no, this is too hard for me. I'm not even going to seriously try and work it out. Or B, ah, this is quite tricky, but I like to push myself. Even if I don't get the answer right, maybe I'll learn something in the attempt. Okay, early in her career, the psychologist Carol Dweck of Stanford University gave a group of 10-year-olds problems that were slightly too hard for them. One group reacted positively, said they loved the challenge and understood that their abilities could be developed. She says that had a grow, that those students had a growth mindset and are focused on what they can achieve in the future. But another group of children felt that their intelligence was being judged and they had failed. They had a fixed mindset and were unable to imagine improving. Some of these children said they might cheat in the future. Others looked for someone who had done worse than them to boost their self-esteem or to feel better about themselves. Self-esteem, by the way, is the way you view yourself. Do you have a positive view about yourself or do you have a negative view about yourself? This has a lot of to, to, to do with confidence. Paragraph three, Professor Dweck, the psychologist, believes that there is a problem in education at the moment in schools. For years, children have been praised for their intelligence or talent, but this makes them vulnerable to failure. They become performance oriented, wanting to please by getting high grades, but they are not necessarily interested in learning for its own sake. What Dweck is saying here is that uh, in the educational system, education is schooling. In the school system, 
we praise students who get high grades. So this student ends up maybe not liking this task or subject, but just wanting to perform well, just wanting to do well without liking uh, this subject, maybe English or biology or French or math, but they just want to be praised for high, grade, high grades. This, according to Dweck, is not a good thing. The solution, according to Dweck, is to praise the process that children are engaged in, praising their effort, how they're making an effort, using learning strategies, persevering and improving. When you have perseverance, is that it means that you go on and on, you try again and again, you have willpower and determination. This way, they will become mastery oriented i.e. that is interested in getting better at something and will achieve more. She contends that sustained effort, meaning a teacher or a school needs to make an effort over a long time. That's what sustained means. Okay, we keep on working with the child or the student the whole year over time. It's the key to outstanding achievement. Obviously, outstanding means excellent. Okay. Paragraph four, psychologists have been testing this theory. Students were taught that if they left their comfort zone and learned something new and difficult, the neurons in their brains would form stronger connections, making them more intelligent. What, what does it mean to your comfort zone? What's your comfort zone? Okay, you're sitting there, you're just uh, playing on your tablet. You don't wanna try anything new. Okay, you, you're scared, maybe you hesitate. According to psychologists, this doesn't boost your brain power. You need to try new things, try new challenges so that your neurons can develop. Neurons are brain and nerve cells. They grow stronger and they make you more intelligent when you try new challenges. These students made faster progress than a control group. In another study, underperforming school children, underperforming means they're not performing as they should be, on a Native American reservation were exposed to growth mindset techniques for a year. You know, Native Americans, those who were uh, originally in America before the immigrants arrived to present-day America, okay? Those people are not privileged at all. They do not have their full rights. Uh, the educational system isn't optimum where they live. But these Native American children in the reservation, they exposed them to a growth mindset method. They started working on improving their mindset. The results were nothing less than staggering. They were very surprising. Those Native Americans who are underprivileged, who are not privileged, came top in regional tests, beating children from much more privileged backgrounds. These children had previously felt, before they felt that making an effort was a sign of stupidity. They shouldn't make an effort. Either you win at something or you fail and leave it. But they came to see it as a key, as the key to learning. In order to learn more, you should make more effort. Don't stop when you fail. Keep on trying. Finally, paragraph four. So back to our original question. If you're, you answered B, well done. You already have a growth mindset. If A, don't worry. Everyone is capable of becoming mastery oriented with a little effort and self-awareness. So the author here is telling you to try if you fail, it's okay. We all fail. Nobody's perfect. Perfection does not exist. Okay, we need to work harder to improve. We need to have a growth mindset. Now, exercises fill in the blanks with the following words. The words are very easy, but it, it, some of them could be confusing, could be tricky. Number one, that was a bit scary. I've never spoken in public before. It really took me out of my zone. What zone were we talking about? She was trying something new. She got out of her comfort zone. 
Two, she's setting up a study group with two groups of children to okay, a study, a research to what her theory? What do they to do to a theory? They test it to test her theory. Number three, you can do better than this. You've really got to more effort, context clue, make more effort. It was quite difficult, but enjoyable too. I, a challenge. Obviously, I love a challenge. He needs to good grades if he wants to be accepted in medical school. He needs to what? Good grades. He needs to get good grades. When my story was accepted, number six, for publication, it was just what I needed to my self-esteem, to improve, boost my self-esteem, make it, improve it. Number seven, my aunt wants to research into attitudes to learning in small children. Obviously, she wants to do research. You can't say she wants to learning research. Number eight, here it is. If you're having problems remembering anything, maybe you need some learning. You need to learn more. There are the answers. You can pause the video when you're watching to take a thorough look at them. Moving on to our next exercise. This is a very important exercise in grade nine. Match the headings with the correct paragraph and write A to F next to numbers one to six. If you want, you can match them by lines, it's okay. Here you have a paragraph and each paragraph has a main idea or a topic. So in paragraph one, what was the main topic? Remember, they were asking you a question. The author was asking you, you have this challenge. How would you respond? B. Paragraph two, what was it talking about? Which of these topics? Okay, two ways of responding to a problem. You can change the way you think, etc. Obviously, to answer such an exercise, you have to go back to each paragraph and read it very well in order to find out what the topic is or the main idea is. Some of them could be tricky. Okay, number two, two ways of responding to a problem. Paragraph three, the right and wrong kind of phrase. Remember in that paragraph, the psychologist said that we shouldn't praise only high grades. We should praise or tell those children who made an effort, even if they didn't get a good grade, that you put good effort. We appreciate your effort and let's work harder together. That was in paragraph three, the right and wrong kind of praise. Paragraph four was talking about uh, how getting out of your comfort zone will train your brain to work more, your neurons will improve, okay? Number, uh, paragraph five, you can change the way you think. It was the final paragraph, the conclusion. Not used staying in your comfort zones. Uh, some of you might cons confuse uh, this and this. Uh, it, it, it didn't talk about staying in your comfort zone. It talked about getting out of your comfort zone. So obviously, this one was not used. The, no, none of the paragraphs had this main idea. Okay, so it was unused. Okay, the following is your homework. Thanks for listening. The following is your homework. Reread the text. Do you have the right mindset? Please read it once and read it twice. Now, answer page 15 in your ebook, exercises C and D. Take care and we'll see you soon. Bye.